Welcome to my project ideas. This is an ongoing series on SAP UIFI projects. And in this particular video, we'll learn how to prepare a planning calendar using SAP UIFI. And there are a few prerequisites like you should be able to understand JSON objects. So you must have a basic understanding of JavaScript, also a basic understanding of SAP UIFI. And you need to have IDE access. It can be Business Application Studio or it can be Web IDE. So before jumping into the actual coding part, we want to share an article. The article link will be shared in the description of the video also. In this article, we have discussed all the theoretical part as well as the coding that we are going to discuss in this video. So you can see the view, the controller, as well as the output screenshot. So yeah, that, 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 that's the thing that you can see here. And uh, Certainly, SAP UIFI provides multiple controls via which you can modify, update, or upgrade your planning calendar. A planning calendar is something that you might have seen over Teams also, right? So let me open up a Teams here, Microsoft Teams. So we'll just uh, continue. Fine. So this is Microsoft Teams. And if I go to the calendar here, you see the calendar appears something like this. Now you can block your calendar or someone else can block your calendar, right? These are a few functionality that you can achieve here. Also, you can like overview what is there in the calendar for next week or upcoming month. So all these functionalities are very important in a business scenario. So keeping this in mind, SAP released planning calendar and uh, if you see here, this is for one particular day where the calendar is booked for different different meetings. Even Teams meeting is there. So we are going to create a basic version of it and you can certainly perform higher operations on top of it. So if I go to the demo part, so if you can see there is a title here, and then we have a button over here and then we have a planning calendar where we have a filter over here that we can divide or content to days, months, week. This is something like Teams, right? Where week is there given here and again a month. So even days are fine. Well, we'll see the hours one. Fine. So if I just refresh, you will see for the hours one also, I have something already blocked. So this is something that is coming from the backend. So this has to come into from backend where if you block a calendar, the data will be saved in the backend in a form of object and that will also reflect in the UI. Also, you can block someone else's calendar, right? So for that, what you can do is like you can create a prompt. So if I go to Teams and I want to block this particular section, I click on it and it opens up a prompt. It opens up a form, right? So here you can provide some details. Those details will be used to block the calendar like the time required, the urgency, and uh, who all will be joining the call, something like that, and a link for the, the call also. So since we are not planning to create some extensive features as of now, but uh, certainly the exact feature, what exactly it will do, we have demonstrated here. So when I click on block for next meeting, what it does, it blocks the calendar for next meeting. So in place of that, what you can do is like, on click of this button, you can open up the form. Ask for the right time. Like I have blogged from the next three hours to next six hours. So like this, I have blogged. So the current timing, if you see here is 110. From 1 to 3, something is blocked. And then 3 to 4, 6, something is blocked. So this is like hard-coded blocking. But you can create a form, enter details, and block accordingly. So now let's uh, jump into the coding part. So as discussed, we have a page here with a title. We have button over here that will be used to block in a hard coded way. And then we have planning calendar over here. The planning calendar, you, you see start date is there. Some path is given and uh, the configuration is the default one. So if, if you can go and copy any planning calendar from the SAP UI 5 explode, it will appear like this only. So we have just copied and pasted the default one. The actual uh, magic goes inside the controller part. So 
here we have used something called on init life cycle function so whenever your ui loads on init will be triggered automatically right and uh, within that what we have done is like we have fetched the current date using javascript new date object and then we have created our local o data inside that we have something called start date where the date will start if you see the plan planning calendar is for our current date only right and then we have within a row we have something called start date again and then we have appointment so this is the part where the blogging happens and in that we have start date and date the date comes with time also right and what we have given is like whatever date is there we fetch the time and in the time we have added three hours so that's why we have a block of three hours here and then we have something called title which is called meeting with uh, sap and the text is like discuss project status if i go here you see meeting with sap discuss project status even i can click on it and it will open up meeting with sap selected so for that we'll uh, handle later on so the type is something called type 01 you can explore all the possible types so it is of type warning if you see the next one is also the type of error and then we have added sap wi-fi icon which i believe is not reflecting anywhere so anyhow this odata is binded to a json model local json model and then this model is set to the entire view so in this way this model will give me this particular odata and it will give me appointments so this will be ultimately binded to the planning calendar because inside the view we have the planning calendar only which is accessing the model and it will access what it will access the rows fine so the thing that you are adding here rows and start date are binded in the start date of the calendar and what rows it has to show also and inside that we have start date and appointment again right so inside that we have start date and appointment and within the appointments also we have something called start date and date title text type everything is here right so so exactly same things are defined here so when you define you will understand okay these are the things we defined and the th things we are binded so most of them are similar the next thing is like handle appointment select so whenever you are clicking something so if you see appointment select is there whenever you click on some particular you know whatever is blogged then what happens i press the appointment using the o event parameter and whatever is selected what i do is like i add a text on in the end so whatever is there then i add the plus selected like this and we show a message box right so same thing is happening here deselected selected so one time we are making it selected and another time we are making it deselected so we have written just a basic query here if it is selected then it will be called selected or deselected just to showcase like every time you can do different operations and in this way we are opening up the message box that's it the good part that we are going to show is like this particular block where whenever it is clicked this particular thing is added so if i refresh it will go away why because on refresh we have this single appointment but on select of this particular block what we do we have like written the same content once again but now we have two appointments the first object remains the same the second object is like we start it from three where the first one was ending and we end it at six let me just make it four and make it seven or yeah that, that's fine right i will refresh once again so i want to showcase like now there will be a gap between the first appointment and second appointment and the only thing we have changed is like we call it next meeting with SAP. We change the description also to discuss next meeting and also type from type 01 to type 02. And then just bind it to the entire view. So I will click on book. You see, now once the book is clicked, there is a gap between the first and second appointment. So I believe you might have understood like the entire concept of planning calendar, how exactly it works and what all features you can utilize so certainly i will expect you to create a better form in place of this block for next meeting and uh, provide something like similar to the teams right so 
in case you have any questions in case you want us to make something better than this project you can always ping in the comment section thank you